Welcome to an episode of Two Psalms in G. Again. <laughs> and today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Riesling. Wow. Yeah. I love Riesling. I love Riesling too. Do you like Riesling? I love Riesling. <laughs> he doesn't seem sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't seem sure at all. They just found me on the street. Are you familiar <laughs> with <laughs> that, 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 is, is that a grape that you are familiar with? It is. Kind of. Not really. I haven't had that many Rieslings, actually. What's mine? <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> so, the first question is... How does a Riesling taste? How's a Riesling to me? Should I go first? Oh, please go for it. So, what I think a Riesling should taste like is it has that fresh, vibrant acidity. That very, very crisp. And it has these lemon-lime characteristics when it's young. And then when it sort of ages, it becomes so much more. It, um, it starts to soften a bit with the acid, but then it starts developing like the honeyed aromas of petroleum as well, which I really like. You like it? I petrol. Love, you enjoyed it? I like it. Yeah. Sniffing the petrol. <laughs> <laughs> I love sniffing the petrol, right? And you can't get it. I used to work in a petrol station when I was young, so it takes me back. Oh, this is very <laughs> easy for you to, to, to get it. That's why I always get petrol. No, yeah. Recent. yeah. Nice. Uh, um, well, it depends in you know, the place where it's grown, of course, Riesling. You have so many places where classic Riesling, we can find classic, classic Rieslings. Uh, Australia is one of them, Austria is another one, Bajau, Mosul Riesling, um, and Alsace. Probably Mosul, um, we find the most classic, like floral, citrus, with usually, uh, with, usually with uh, Riesling sugar, no? In the Cabernet okay. Spolese or um, uh, sweet wine is um, uh, it's a wine that adapt to very uh, different conditions too. That's a uh, very versatile grape. Uh, you can make a bone dry out of it, off dry, uh, very sweet wine. So Riesling can be everything. Mm. Riesling can be everything. Yeah. What do you think, Jay? Maybe this is something. Riesling tastes like everything. It tastes <laughs> like everything. Very good answer. Okay. Zippy Riesling. Oh. Next question is: What makes a good Riesling? Cheek? What makes a good Riesling? Just a uh, refreshing, refreshing, easy to drink. Um, yeah, that's what Riesling is to me. Okay, just that's valid. Nice and easy to drink, not complex, very simple. It's a simple, can be a very simple wine for me. That's why I like it. Um, as I said before, um, there are so many regions that are producing today classic Riesling, but uh, yeah. But for me, uh, what is uh, good or nice for Riesling that it always shows its typicity, like its uh, high acidity, its lemon sesty uh, kind of um, aromas, flowers as well, and and the wine develop into uh, more toasty and honey and petrol kerosene um, as the wine ages. Uh, I think that is what, for me, makes a good Riesling. Um, well, I think um, I think what makes a good Riesling is when they're when they're young, they they show that vibrancy, that, that refreshing zestiness, uh, that lemon lime characteristic when they're young. But then, I think a Riesling should always be able to age. All the reasons that I like drinking. So I want a Riesling in three or four or five years. And you don't, age. and you don't have many many white varieties. You can age. Yeah, yeah, Actually, true, age. True. yeah I mean, just there's a few. Chardonnay and just there's a few. Riesling and, and Chenin Blanc. Yeah, and uh, yeah, but not many. That's true. And like I want, I want wine. my Riesling to age. Yeah, I want my Riesling to taste like honeyed petrol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, you get some petrol. Yeah, you, yeah, you, mate, you stir that around. And go. <laughs> yeah, mate. <laughs> yeah, mate. <laughs> And that's Riesling. Just imagine you're out Riesling. in like Albury at a petrol station there. <laughs> just like the, the counter some, clerk. You, you, got, you know, <laughs> put some petrol in the jerry can and then you get some honey and you go, <laughs> Well, there, there are memes about it. It's like, yeah, it's a gasoline and it's a. Oh, this is Riesling. It's gasoline and Sprite. Gasoline and Sprite. Done. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it, so. Okay, the next question is Where do you think the best Riesling comes from and why? Javier? I got asked that for me. Oh. oh my god. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. But I enjoyed um, Alsace wrestling, probably, uh, a lot. 
Um, I don't know, I, I feel that it's a kind of it's a mixture of uh, subtle and the strong, the flowers and strong um, kind of flavors. This is um, more this uh, steely and oily character probably in the mouth. Um, in uh, warmer vintages, you get uh, more riper, ripe aromas like peach, apricot. Um, yeah, that's uh, really, really, really enjoyed. And still, the wine is suitable for a so many years. Yeah, you can have um, the young, you can have them old. Yeah, that's uh, probably my favorite, but uh, yeah, yeah you'd be one. very unfair with, then with, the rest, <laughs> with the rest. With the rest. Um, so you stole mine. I said Alsace. Ah, uh, well. really? Yeah, I oh, have no, a very, no, no. very. Just, uh, I'm gonna choose another one. <laughs> <laughs> I have an affinity <laughs> to Alsace and Riesling only because uh, uh, my wife and I actually went to to Alsace, oh. uh, walked nice. to Rigvier as well, oh, walked through the village there, yeah. um, and coincidentally we stayed in the Airbnb and we stayed with the sommelier. Ooh. It was absolutely awesome, and his parting gift to us was a bottle of Hugo Riesling. That's why I have Hugo such an affinity yeah. to that brand, to that, yeah. and that's why I have such a fond memory of that wine, and that's why I always carry Hugo Riesling in my cellar. Wow. <laughs> yeah, hey, you had so many Riesling from all Yeah, uh, there's so, so much yeah. different brands that are amazing Yeah, uh, from all Uh but Hugo's at a uh, spot in my heart. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. So and that's why I like our so station reason. And then I'm gonna pick all the reasons one. that you said. I'm gonna pick another one. So. No, you can't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so all uh, the reasons that you said, I like reasoning. That oiliness, that honey texture there. When it's young, it's vibrant. Yeah. Look at question one too. Yeah. I'm gonna go a bit different, and I'm just gonna say German Riesling, the home of the Rieslings. Why? I just like how there's so much varieties to pick from, you know, like yeah. every 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 country kind of has like their own s region, but it's got their own style, but Germany's got like a bit of a, uh, it can go from like very dry to very sweet um, to dessert wines, like you can get any type of reason you want in Germany. And we've got the perfect conditions, grow it, it's crisp, easy to drink. It's yeah, you right can get like, dry ones, you can get sweet yeah. ones there, you can, yeah. Yeah, but probably the style you find the most in, 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 in Mosul is probably uh, after dry, dry uh, styles dry. with sugar and yeah. It's probably yeah. the, the but style. The, the Trocken uh, ones, like, yeah, like yeah. the Dr. Yeah. Birkenwolf is, is really yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah the, but these are like, coming from another region that is uh, still. Yeah, yeah. but um, um, yeah, then it's probably the style where most of the people is familiar with. In the restaurant, and usually when when you mention Riesling, they think straight away about a sweet one. Yeah, well, yeah, at least that, I think that's dry the, Riesling. No, no, I, think no, that's I the don't negative thing about people think about Riesling. Yeah, yeah. Because they think Riesling is going to be sweet. Yeah, but even though the wine is off dry, it not necessarily need to be bad. Yeah, yeah. Like it's a, actually the acid really gives of you cabinet of dry styles. Yeah, and most of that are very, very good. Try, try a Riesling. Try a Clay Valley Riesling, yeah. and you'll be pleasantly surprised. Because it's so zesty as hell. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cheers. It was a Jim. The Jim Barry, what about our Riesling? What were we drinking? And the last question Ooh. is. And this is difficult, eh? Because I don't have. What's your favorite bottle of Riesling? My favorite <sighs> bottle of Riesling. Well, I, I'm hosting <laughs> today. <laughs> so I am already prepared. <laughs> my favorite bottle of Riesling is this one right here. You already. Yeah, it's got a place in my heart. This is the Hugo Riesling. Um. Yeah, I received it as a gift from our Airbnb host and I've got a bottle every single time. Whenever I see the 15 vintage, I buy a bottle. I've got three of them now. I was lucky to find two bottles at Dan Murphy's. But wow. Everything else was saying 17, 17, 17, and I saw two 15s and I bought it. So, Hugo Riesling. Cheap. Awesome. For me, I guess I had, um, had a nice, nice Riesling from I think it was like Moselle, Moselle. Okay. Yeah, Moselle Riesling. I'm not quite sure where it's from, but I got it at Dan Murphy's and I thought it was really nice. Just a cabinet one. Oh, cabinet. Oh, uh, Schloss Wollards? Yes. I, I pronounced it Schloss Wollards. Okay, that was Schloss Wollards. <laughs> that sounds better. <laughs> yeah, I said. Schloss Wollards. Yeah. It's, um, it's um, yeah. Ringo. Ron Hessen, isn't it? Yeah, Ringo. Ringo Wollards. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's my favorite. Great, so far. He's a great uh, producer. That's great, yeah. Yeah. So far. Um, okay. Um, well, 
the slot. That's a difficult one, huh? but um, I don't know. Uh, probably, I don't know if this is my favorite, but the one I really enjoyed the most when I drink it. And actually, I just drank it just once because it's an expensive Riesling. And it's from Trimbeck. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a Frederick Emil. Oh, my you know, God, that's a, a beautiful one. It's, like, it's like the 2013. It's like the youngest brother of the Close and Old, probably, which is yeah. considered by many as the best Riesling, Riesling ever in the world. Um, yeah, it's, um, oh God, that's a beautiful one. I don't know if it's my, I, I couldn't say that it's my favorite because it's just, I just drank it once. It's got so much um, development it's, um, that wine. But it's, uh, yeah, very complex. Yeah, it's a very complex Riesling. Uh, yeah, I want to buy that one now. Oh, yeah, me too. I had it at a tasting at Town Hall and it was, oh my God. You had a hundred yeah. bucks now? It's so expensive. So, probably more. I know, but yeah. Um, yeah, this is the wine I enjoy the most when I, when I drank it. Alsatian, Alsatian Riesling is really Alsatian Riesling. Great. Uh, Trimbach comes from. It's a very, very famous house in in Alsace. Wow. And Frederick Emil is like the one of the the top wines in their portfolio. Uh huh. And they usually release it when it's quite old. Like I think minimum release for aging is like six years or something like that. Wow. So it's pretty complex. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's up my alley of honey petrol. Honey petrol. <laughs> <laughs> Nice wine, nice pick, nice pick. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Two Psalms and Chi. Chi. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you did like this, leave a comment down below saying you did like it and you want more of these videos. Um, thank you very much for coming. It's been a pleasure. Um, thank you for bringing lunch. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank, you for, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for having lunch me. Lunch again. I bought lunch again. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like twice. Since twice now. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much, both of you guys, for coming. Um, it's been a pleasure hosting you guys. It's been really, really fun. And uh, yeah, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> so this episode is brought to you by the JobKeeper Allowance. Uh, so <laughs> I'm really like, thank you, Skymo. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Th yeah, thank you, Scamo. Um, he hates you. <laughs> he's, oh, he's getting by, but stupid. please give him a hand, please. <laughs> I'm a homeless guy. Do you have a Patreon? I'm or? a homeless guy. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Yeah. It's been a pleasure with, um, yeah. to share another video with you, another day with you. Yeah. It's been, um, it's what been is, interesting. It's been a bit darker it's since last week. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to sell it so hard. <laughs> it's definitely not right after the other video. <laughs> of course not. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, high five. High five off the cheeks. High five. Like, for it. High five. Oh. Yeah. yeah. High five. Yes. High five. Yeah. High five. Yeah. High five. Yeah. High five. Uncle Javier. Pre pressure's on. High five. Uncle, Uncle, pressure's on. Uncle Javier. High five. Oh, it's down here. No, it is like. High five. I want it. No, but I don't. He does it on the down low, alright? Oh, high five. He doesn't do oh. it high up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He was like, what? Well done for all your wine drinking. Yeah. Whilst I was napping. <laughs> <laughs>